This is Patrick with the Southern California Paleo Society. In this video, I will demonstrate how to make solutions with Acroloid slash Paraloid B72. It's a polymer, it's a plastic, and we make solutions using acetone. Now the reason why we would want to use Acroloid slash Paraloid B72 is because B72 is widely used throughout the paleo world as a consolidant. And what it's useful for is that frequently the fossils that we find are very fragile. Not only are the fossils themselves fragile, the matrix, the background material that they are in can also be very fragile as well. And so we need something to kind of solidify the mass and to also stabilize and protect the fossil itself. And that's where our B72 comes in handy. B72 has a lot of advantages. It's really easy to work with. It dissolves very readily in acetone. And once it's dissolved in acetone, the acetone helps it penetrate matrices very easily so that you can basically soak an entire specimen in B72, which will then solidify it. B72 also has some other desirable properties, such as it is very stable. It does not break down very readily. Uh, it will withstand the test of time. Another good property of B72 is that it does not yellow with age. So frequently with other materials, as it ages, it'll start picking up some other colors and it'll start uh, discoloring. So B72 will not do that. B72 also has not only excellent penetrative properties, Depending on the strength of the solution you make, it is also got, has very good coverage properties. So for example, if you make a 5% solution, 5% weight to volume solution of B72, it's a very good consolidant. It can, it's, it's pretty dilute and so it will penetrate the rock very easily. However, if you make a 20% solution, then it will cover the surface of the rock. It won't penetrate as quickly or readily. And that's very useful too, because sometimes you may want to uh, get a good nice surface coating on it for aesthetic purposes, or as a good uh, writing surface. Uh, if you would want to mark your specimens, give them a unique ID later. Also, B72 has some great adhesive properties. So again, if you, Put a thin layer of B 20% B72 solution on, it will coat the surface and then you can glue uh, something else on top of it. So for example, if you accidentally broke your specimen or if there is a, the rock has, the matrix has broken and you want to glue it back together, B72 is very useful for that. You can use a 20% solution all the way up to a 50% solution. B72 is, is incredibly useful and this is one of the things that will be useful for a further preparation on down the line. So this is a prerequisite. You'll need to make sure your specimen is stabilized and repaired in order to do uh, some of the preparation further on, such as using an air scribe, using air abrasives, or any number of uh, other preparation techniques. So let's talk about the materials you'll need in order to make your solutions. Now the first thing you'll need is uh, equipment to protect yourself. We're gonna be using acetone as a solvent and acetone can potentially be absorbed through your skin and you would not want that. So make sure you have a pair of latex or nitrile gloves to protect your hands. Also, uh, as with any chemical, there is the potential for splashes and so you would also want to protect your eyes. Make sure that the chemical won't splash into your eyes. And so make sure you have a pair of safety glasses or safety goggles. Now, once you have your safety equipment, some of the other items you'll need is obviously B72. B72 is sold in little plastic pellets like this. This uh, particular package is a one pound package. And I found that uh, one pound is more than enough that I'll need for my lifetime of uses. The other thing you'll need is acetone. This is available in any hardware store. 
uh, frequently there's a the, the cap is a little difficult to open and so there's a little notch you may need a little screwdriver to kind of pop the cap open you'll also need a container to make your solution in now acetone is a pretty strong organic solvent which means it will dissolve a lot of different types of plastic and so you need to make sure that well, whatever container you're going to be working with acetone is compatible with acetone and some of the materials that are compatible would be metal which is why this, this container is sold in the metal package metal is compatible so is glass so these are uh, empty nail polish uh, bottles and these are made out of glass. Now these nail polish bottles are really useful for uh, aliquoting your solution in. So once you've made a big batch, it's useful to divide them up into smaller batches and store them in nail polish bottles. And they're really, really useful because they already have a brush inside. And so that's useful for applying your solution. Also nail polish is frequently uses acetone as the solvent. And so this, container is already designed to hold an acetone solution. So you know it's going to be compatible. And also acetone is very volatile, which means it will evaporate really quickly. And so you also need something that will be able to seal it, to seal it pretty tightly to prevent acetone from evaporating. Another note on the nail polish bottles. You can reuse uh, clear nail polish. That's fine. It has to be clear. You don't, you wouldn't want to have a, introduce a tint to your solutions. And you can reuse them as long as you clean them out with acetone very thoroughly. So make sure it's rinsed out very thoroughly and dry it out. Now back to the container. Uh, glass and metal are okay, but what about plastics? Well, some plastics are compatible, not all plastics. We want to make sure that the container that we use is uh, compatible and so I know for example that polypropylene is a compatible plastic at the bottom of the container there is a recycling triangle and inside the triangle there'll be a resin code which is a number and then at the bottom there will be some letters and so this one says PP at the bottom and PP stands for polypropylene and so I know then that this container is compatible with acetone. And if you are going to be working with uh, chemicals and making your solutions, you should always label your solutions. And so I've already pre-labeled my container here in preparation for my solution. Now you'll also need a kitchen scale. This is to measure out the amount of B72 you'll need to make your solution. You would also want some uh, aluminum foil, just a little piece that acts as whey paper uh, for your scale. Also uh, a measuring cup. You need a measuring cup to be able to measure the amount of acetone or liquid to put in your solution. Now I've already pre-filled this measuring cup, which I got from the kitchen with some water. And I've pre-filled it to 150 milliliters because I know that's how much this container holds. Now I'm only filling this with water for a couple of reasons. One is that since this is a kitchen utensil, you would definitely not want to cross contaminate what you're doing with a kitchen utensil with a acetone. In fact, it would probably be best if you were just, if you were gonna use a measuring cup, you would only use that for non-food purposes. Now, the other reason that uh, I filled this with water is because this is made out of plastic and I don't know what type of plastic this is made out of. So I'm not sure if this is compatible with acetone. And so that's why I filled it with water first because I can then just pour it into this container and then mark it. So I'll do that right now actually. And then all I need to do is take a Sharpie and just mark the water level. So now I've marked the line where the level of water goes. And so I know that the amount of liquid that I pour into here 
as long as I reach that level, then I know there is 150 milliliters of liquid. And so then I can just pour this water out. And then when I make my solution, all I have to do is just pour the acetone up to this line. And last but not least, some Sharpies to help mark, but also to help label. And some marking tape. And these are useful for marking your bottles of, uh, of nail polish. So once we've got all our materials, the next step is to figure out how much B72 we're going to need. Now, of course, that depends on the volume of the solution that we'll be making. So for this example, I'm making 150 milliliters. That's amount that will last me for several months. Next, we're going to decide what the percentage of the solution we'll be making. Now, I recommend starting with a 20% solution. It's easy to dilute down a 20% solution down to a 5% solution. So once you've made your 20% solution, all you have to do is then you take one part of your 20% solution and you mix it with three parts acetone. It's a 25% dilution, and that should get you a 5% solution. Let's figure out now how much B72 we're going to need in order to make a 20% solution in 150 milliliters. And it's a 20% weight to volume ratio. Since this is paleontology, we're just using a working solution. Uh, and so it's good enough that we just do a weight to volume ratio. Then the calculation would then be really simple because we would just multiply 20% or 0.2 times our volume, which is 150 milliliters, that would equals 30, which is the amount of grams that we'll need of B72. So if you were going to do a 5% solution, it would be 0 0.05 times 150 equals 7.5 grams. So let's weigh out 30 grams of B72. So first we turn on our scale, put our weigh paper down. It's a little windy, so and make sure it's in grams. And again, this is this is just an approximate amount. And so it's not a big deal if you're off by a gram plus or minus. Okay, so there's 30 grams. Now we can put that in our container. Since we have our B72 measured out, then we can just, there's a notch in here that just use the, the screwdriver to Okay, and then now you want to be very careful and pour in your acetone solution. And just pour up to the line. So that's up to the line and then it should start dissolving as soon as you do that. But since this is 20%, there's quite a bit of B72 in there. So it may take a few hours uh, just to play it safe. You may wanna just let it sit there overnight and let it dissolve. So once your solution is fully dissolved, you shouldn't see any, uh, any pellets in there still. And if you swirl it around, there shouldn't be any clouds at the bottom. Once it's nice and perfectly clear, then it's ready for you to start uh, putting it into your clear nail polish bottles. And while I was waiting, I labeled all of my bottles. These are new, but you can reuse uh, old ones. Just make sure the bottles that you are reusing are clear nail polish. It's gotta be clear. And also make sure you rinse it out very thoroughly with acetone. Make sure you get the old remnants out. And then uh, make sure it's also dry. But uh, acetone is very volatile. It will evaporate very quickly. And just fill this up.
Okay, well, there you have it. This will make a lot of solution and will, should be enough to last you for a while. And these bottles are really, really handy. So this brush makes a very handy applicator. And also you can put it in your field bag um, and take it out into the field. Oftentimes we'll find a fossil in the field that looks like it's very crumbly or very fragile. So you can apply the consultant, uh, you'd want to use 5%. You can also use 20%, it just depends on the type of material, more commonly 5%. And you can apply it right in the field and because acetone is so volatile, it'll dry very, very quickly. And so after a few minutes, it should be stabilized, which would be very helpful if, when you try to extract your fossil. So now that we have our solutions, we can give a demonstration of B72 at work. So we have here, this is a scallop shell. This is from the Pliocene Pico Formation. So this has already been cleaned off. Uh, it's been washed and brushed to get rid of some of the, the sediment around it. So this is the 5% solution. You can see immediately just seeping through it. And this will strengthen your fossil. So this is actually quite fragile. And so this will give it some rigidity and some strength. Now just for contrast, I'm going to apply the 20% solution. Another reason why people like using B72 is that, see when it is applied, you get this nice, kind of a shiny polished look. It's almost like a wet look. And people like that. See how handy the brush and the nail polish bottles are for this. See the 20% solution is a bit more viscous. So you can see the differences. It's a lot more glossier for the 20% solution. And this is another reason why B72 is in the acetone solution is very handy. Because if you don't like it, you can always just remove it. Just apply some acetone on a cotton ball or a paper towel and you can just wipe it right off. Or you can just soak it in the acetone solution. So that concludes my demonstration for B72. I hope you found this informative and thank you so much for watching.